Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. First of all, let me say thanks to Allah Subhanahu wa Taala who has given us mercy and blessing to us. Salawat and salam to our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam by reciting Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala ali Muhammad. And then I want to say thanks to Mr. Nuar D.M.E.D. as the lecturer of Data Analysis and Measurement course. My name is Dinaya Pratamianas and I'm from English Education Department Class 6A. Today I want to present about Quantitative Data Analysis. Quantitative Data Analysis is a powerful research form emanating in part from the positive tradition. It's often associated with large-scale research, but can also serve smaller-scale investigation with case studies, external research, correlational research, and experiment. Next, scales of data. The nominal scale. The nominal scale simply denotes categories. 1 means such and such a category, 2 means another, and so on. For example, 1 might denote males and 2 might denote females. The second one is ordinal scale. The ordinal scale not only classifies but also introduces an order into the data. This might be rating scales where, for example, strongly agree is stronger than agree. The third one is interval scale. The interval scale introduces a metric, a regular and equal interval between each data point, as well as keeping the features of the previous two scales, classification and order. Next, ratio scale. The ratio scale embraces the main features of the previous three scale, classification, order, and equal interval metric, but adds a fourth powerful feature, a true zero. Next, parametric and non-parametric data. Parametric data is some knowledge of the characteristic of the population in order for inferences to be able to be made securely. They often assume a normal, Gaussian curve of distribution as in reading scores. Parametric data tend to be derived from experiment and tests. The second one is non-parametric data, or those which make no assumption about the population, usually because the characteristics of the population are unknown. Non-parametric data are often derived from questionnaire and surveys. Next, descriptive and inferential statistics. Descriptive statistics do exactly what they say. They describe and present data, for example, in terms of summary frequencies. Such statistics make no inferences or prediction. They simply report what has been found in a variety of ways. The next one is inferential statistic. By contrast, strive to make inferences and prediction based on the data gathered. This will include, for example, hypothesis testing, correlation, regression, and multiple regression, difference testing. Next, one-tail and two-tail tests. In a one-tail test, one predict, for example, that one group will score more highly than the other. And one-tail test will be used with a directional hypothesis. The second one is two-tail test. In a two-tail test, one makes no such prediction and a total test will be used with a non-directional hypothesis. The next one is dependent and independent variables. A dependent variable is the outcome variable that which is caused in a total or in part by the input attendance variable. It is the effect consequences of or response to an independent variable. The second one is an independent variable is an input variable that which causes, in part or in a total, a particular outcome. It is a stimulus that influences a response, an attendance or a factor which may be modified to affect an outcome. Next, reliability. Reliability in a quantitative analysis takes two main forms, both of which are measure of internal consistency, the split half technique, and the alpha coefficient. Both calculate a coefficient of reliability that can lie between 0 and 1. As we can see, the formula for the split half and for the alpha coefficient. Next, exploratory data analysis. What can we do with simple frequencies in exploratory data analysis? For all four scales, we can calculate frequencies and percentages, and we can consider presenting the in variety of forms. We can also calculate the mod on present cross-tabulation. 
we can consider combining categories and collapsing tables into smaller tables, providing that the sensitivity of the original data has not been lost. We can calculate the median score which is particularly useful if the data are spread widely or if there are outliers. In examining frequencies and percentages, one also has to investigate whether the data are skewed. Next, statistical significance. Much statistical analysis hangs on the notion of statistical significance. Kirsch indicates that a statistically significant result is one of four which stands in an unlikely explanation. This is the essence of hypothesis testing in quantitative research. Typically, hypotheses fall into two types. The first one, the null hypothesis, and the second one, the alternative hypothesis. Next, hypothesis testing. The first stage is, in quantitative research, we commence with a null hypothesis. Stage 2. Having set the null hypothesis, the researcher then sets the level of significance or alpha that will be used to support or not to support the null hypothesis. This is the alpha level. The, th the stage 3. Having the set null hypothesis and the level at which it will be supported or not supported, one then computes the data in whatever form is appropriate from the research in question. And the last stage, having analyzed the data, one is then in a position to support or not to support the null hypothesis, and this is what would be reported. Next, the effect size. An effect size is simply a way of quantifying the difference between two groups. For example, if one group has had an experimental treatment and the other has not, the control, then the effect size is a measure of the effectiveness of the treatment. It tells the reader how big the effect is, something that the p-value or statistical significance does not do. Glass arrow calculate the effect size as mean of experimental group minus mean of control group per standard deviation of the control group. Next, the chi-square test. It measures the difference between a statistically generated expected result and actual result to see if there is a statistically significant difference between them. The chi-square test statistic addresses the notion of statistical significance, itself based on notion of probability. Here is not the place to go into the mathematics of the test, not least because computer packages automatically calculate the result. Next, degrees of freedom. Gorard suggests that the degrees of freedom is the number of scores we need to know before we can calculate the rest. For a cross tabulation, degrees of freedom revert to the freedom with which the researcher is able to assign values to the cell, given fixed marginal totals usually given as number of rows 1 plus number of columns 1. Next, measuring association. There are several simple measures of association, and these are the most widely used, as we can see in the video. Next, regression analysis. Regression analysis enables the researcher to predict the specific value of one variable when we know or assume values of the other variables. There are two regression analyses. The first one is simple linear regression, and the second one is multiple regression. Next, measure of difference between groups and means. The first one is the t-test. The t-test is used to discover whether there are statistically significant differences between the means of two groups. Next, ANOVA. Analysis of variance is permissible under the same assumption as t-test, that is random sampling, a normal distribution of score and parametric data, and it can be used with three or more groups. Next, one-way ANOVA. Analysis of variance will tell us whether they are. We commence with the null hypothesis and then we set the level of significance to use supporting or not supporting the null hypothesis. Next, to weigh ANOVA. It enables the researcher to examine not only the effect of each independent variable, but also the interaction effects on each other of the two independent variables. Next, the Man Whitney and Wilcoxon test for two independent sample and the Wilcoxon test for two related sample. And next, the Kruskal Wallace and the Friedman test. The Kruskal Wallace test for three or more independent samples and the Friedman test for three or more related samples. Okay, I think that's all for me. I do apologize if I said something wrong and thank you very much for the attention. The last I say, wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.